All right, well, it's opening day here in Michigan. I'm all set up. I got in here nice and early this morning. Um, it's always hectic that first time up in the stand with all your hunting gear and the camera gear. But I'm set up. I'm solo camming this morning on my brand new property. I just got this spring. Spent a lot of time this year prepping this property. I've um, got about five food plots, a couple water holes, um, and the deer are out here. There is a ton of deer. So hoping uh, the morning is going to be good and uh, the deer will travel through here. So I'm sort of set up on a, one of the trails that I have to access the different food plots here. So I got food plots all around me, but I didn't want to go in there and blow the deer out of them first thing. So I'm sort of sitting in a transition spot in the woods between the plots. Hopefully they're cruising back and forth this morning. Finally made it to the end of the week. It's Friday. I, I saw a devil and some turkeys. Now I'm over one of my... <laughs> okay, well, I just got set up. Finally getting to set this food plot. Well, the season started out really slow for me. Um, still hunted hard. Just hunted just about every night that I could. Um, but just wasn't working on my new property. So I really needed to switch it up. So I headed over to Tustin, uh, my father-in-law's place. And the deer were on the move over there. All right, well, we're back in Osceola County tonight. Uh, I'm sitting in a stand that I've shot a lot of bucks on over the year on my father-in-law's place, and uh, super excited. We got a lot of bucks coming in here. The stealth cam's been sending me pictures. So the last three days uh, since we had this cold front come through, nothing giant. This isn't a property that produces monsters, but there's legal bucks out here, and um, I haven't seen a legal buck yet in the stand, and it's already 16th or 17th of the month, so... If one of those decent eight points comes in, I'll probably take one. Um, there's a couple sixes. Um, I'll probably pass those if they come in. There's one that's really unique. He's really tall, goofy looking buck. But uh, my wife's up about 150 yards to the north of me. And uh, she's sitting over one of our Michigan whitetail food plots tonight. So hopefully she gets it done too. Um, a lot of times they uh, come through me first. So <laughs> I'll get a look at them before they head up into the food plot. I'm tucked right back in in the corner, so we'll see what happens. Should be a good night. Stay with us. reason I did it is because he's heading right to my wife. She could be shooting any second in a straight line. She's only about maybe 150 yards, 200 yards from me and that spike walked right to her and I'm sure he's going to follow right in there too. So she'd be really happy with that buck. Uh, it's legal here. It was a six point uh, mainframe eight to snow brow tines. So um, he got the walk by me at 15 yards, but I can tell you what, if he gives my wife that shot, he'll be in trouble. We'll see if we hear the whack coming real soon. Should be a fun night. She should be shooting. Well, Jesse never did get that buck. I don't know where he went. I guess that's where they get their name, the elusive whitetail. Uh, but I kept hunting hard. Went back uh, up north to my property. I really wanted to kill a buck off of it, um, but I couldn't get out there in the mornings. But come November, 
I was on my deercation and I could finally get in the stand morning and night. All right, well, we're finally in the stand in the morning. Today is the uh, first full day of my deercation and I've already got deer on the move. I got some does in the rye here behind me. There was a buck out there grunting in the dark. I couldn't tell what he was. As got daylight, I could see horns on one of the deer, so I had the oblique in. Brought him right across this grass field into my Michigan whitetail food plot, and he, uh, I think he's still down here just a little bit, but not enough points, not big enough, but brought him right in, so glad to see that. Big bonus today. I can see, uh, usually I have to wear glasses to see a long distance, trying out contacts, so I don't have the fogging up. It's been a very good thing, especially with this cold morning. It's like 30 degrees. Still a chance of snow again today. And it's only early November. This is exactly what you're looking for. I love it. But it should be a good morning. And uh, we are going to switch properties tonight. I've sat in this stand the last three nights in a row trying to target that big buck. I had on camera a couple nights ago. He does not show, he just not showing up. So we're going to get vocal this morning. We are going to rattle. We've already been in the OK and we're going to grunt. And uh, we're going to see if we can't bring something
I hope I got that buck. It's the first day of my official vacation. And I've been wanting to hunt this stand all morning. I can't get out here in the mornings. And he wrote the script. I don't know, I'm gonna give him some time, obviously. I probably don't need to though, because it's one of those shots where he's either gonna be dead at 100, 150 yards, or he's not gonna die. Because it's either I hit the, I hit the lungs, or I'm in the meat of the shoulder. And it's a 50-50 shot. I gotta get home on the big screen and uh, zoom in and take a look at this in slow motion to see how much of the shoulder I hit. But I mean, I, I shoot pretty long arrows, but I had to get at least six, eight inches of penetration, which should have been enough to get in that chest cavity. But there's gonna be no exit hole, so tracking's gonna be tough. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm still gonna sit here for an hour, think about it before I get down out of this stand and start looking. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, stay with us. The old ups and downs of hunting. Well, we're on the track and uh, he's went about 120 yards so far. I got my, my neighbor John over here helping me out. We know it's in the shoulder, but one good thing I just found is this. That's a chunk of lung that he either coughed up or something. So what that tells me is I got into that chest cavity. So now we just got to find him. If I get in that lung, he should die. We're gonna keep the track up here, we're working slow, we're working quiet. So that if we do find him, I might well get in the air with him. Stay with us. Well, I never did find that buck. I searched high and low, stomped out the whole property. Um, I knew I was in the shoulder, but I thought for sure I'd still get in that chest cavity and find him, but it never did happen. As the season was coming to an end, I got a message on my phone. Um, one of our followers on Facebook had reached out to me asking some information on that on that buck that I shot, and I'm sort of curious to why. He actually shot that buck. Come to find out, uh, two weeks later, he had traveled about a mile and a half and was living on a different property, and during gun season, uh, he was taken by one of my neighbors. And as he's gutting the deer and getting it dressed, he... Uh, pulled out a chunk of my arrow, about six, eight inches, out of the opposite shoulder. So it actually went through the shoulder, through the chest cavity, right in the, the bread box where you wanna be, in the opposite shoulder. So I cannot believe that that didn't, wasn't a fatal hit on that deer, but I'm glad to see at least the neighbor got him and somebody got to, to take that buck. So um, just goes to show you how tough they are and um, hopefully I'll have a nice one running on there in 2022 and uh, will have finally killed my first buck on my new property. Thank you very much for checking out our video. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell. That way you can get notifications every time we post new content. And if you haven't already, make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and you can check out our website at www.vitalshopproductions.com.